Welcome back to our live stream from Georgia State University. This will be one of the Game Jam locations for the Global Game Jam. So make sure you check out their site. And I also want to introduce one other person, Ron Williams, before he sits down. The uh, chapter president for the IGDA Atlanta has got an announcement as well. I'll shake hands first. Thank you. <laughs> All right, guys. Hey, everybody who's joining in and out there and everybody here. Um, I'm Ron Williams. I'm the uh, chair of the IGDA Atlanta chapter. And I uh, just wanted to let you guys know that we are currently looking for two additional board members for the IGDA Atlanta. So uh, we had one person who stepped down over the past year and one person who has now uh, served their entire term. And so looking to backfill those guys, if you are interested in joining and serving on the board of the IGDA Atlanta, uh, follow our Facebook group, jump in there. We've got links and stuff like that. And there's a short little survey that you have to fill out, basically just saying why you want to do it. Um, and the deadline to do that is, I believe, the 12th of this month. So just go ahead, sign up there, give us a little bit of information, and then we'll go to an election, and uh, we will decide who the new two board members will be. So thank you. Thank you, Ron, and thanks for all your work with the IGD Atlanta chapter. All right, so game jams are exciting 48-hour periods in which you can actually crank out and create a game. It's a great way to jumpstart your career. For a lot of people, unfortunately, it doesn't go past that point. So very glad to have our panel with us to talk about not only how to survive and do your best work during a game jam, but how to keep that energy going after the game jam. So with that, I'm glad to introduce our moderator, Dr. J. O'Toole, and I'll let the rest of the panel introduce themselves. So thank you all very much. All right, thanks, Andrew. Uh, thanks for all being here tonight. Georgia State University is proud to host our, I believe, our third annual uh, global game jam this year, so please go ahead and sign up. I, at this point, we have a good number signed up already, I think close to 40, um, which at this point is excellent. So we hope to exceed 100 again this year. We've had over 100 last year and close to 100 year before that. That's a really great event, um, and uh, we'd love to see you out. Uh, my name is Dr. J. O'Toole. I'm an assistant professor here at Georgia State University in managerial sciences, and I'm a faculty affiliate of the Creative Media Industries Institute. I study video game development and video game firms, uh, help out the Georgia Game Developers Association with the annual economic impact report as well. Um, and I've participated in and hosted, I think, five or six global game jams now. So um, we're excited to do it again this year. Uh, why don't we start with just introductions? But when you introduce yourself, if you could just maybe tell a brief story of your first game jam experience, whether it's global game jam or not, what was your first game jam experience? Uh, hi, my name is Kartik. I am one of the leads of Finite Reflection Studios, uh, the team behind Twin Cop. And uh, my first game jam experience, not including one random internet game jam I did and like, Freshman year, before freshman year of college, um, was the Global Game Jam at SCAD two, three years ago? Two or three years ago. It's been a while now. Um, and that was a pretty weird experience for me because I, I didn't, uh, the only person I knew I was going to work with was this guy here. And um, we both showed up and we were just like, well, neither of us are like particularly fantastic artists. Neither of us know how to make music. I guess we'll just, you know, find people who can do these things and we'll go for it. And we had, like, so many team mix-ups. Everyone was like, oh, we're going to be in that team. Oh, no, no, we're going to be in that team. And finally, we thought we found our team. And then our team was just like, they drew a line down the middle of the table. And they were like, all right, you guys are together. And we are just like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I guess we'll uh, I guess we'll team up with you. Do you know how to do art? Thankfully, one of the guys on the team knew how to do art. He's like, oh, great, perfect. Do you know how to do music? And like, That's all I do. I only do music. And we're like, okay, great. That worked out fantastically for us. And uh, so we ended up with a good team composition. We ended up with a team in which everyone had their own unique set of skills. And uh, we, we made a pretty awesome, fun game called The Merciful God, which... Um, Thank you. <laughs> which won, uh, which won the best in Georgia that year. So, um, yeah, that's my story. Hello, I'm Eric. My story is very similar, as you can imagine. Um, I guess I'll tell just a slightly different perspective, which was uh, during that 48-hour game jam, uh, I slept for a total of four hours over over that whole thing. Not not great. Be careful. I knew I was done because I was trying to read my code like this. <laughs> but I uh, I remember going, and it was 
middle of, middle of the afternoon on like a Saturday, and I, I went out to the couches because we were at SCAD, and I just laid down, and I fell asleep, and I woke up. I saw what time it was, and I realized that everyone had to be like around me eating dinner because I was in the dinner place. <laughs> Didn't didn't realize, didn't wake up, didn't do anything, and I woke up and I was like, all right, back to work. So, so yeah. All right, I'm Stephen Borden. Um, I'm a programmer and designer, game designer, and uh, my first game jam was like 10 years ago or so, and I've done like one a year or so since, maybe a few more. Um, but the first jam I did was like a really small jam. It's like 10 people all on one team, and uh, I really recommend you keep teams smaller than that. Um, so what happened was uh, a lot of people made really good art and really good music, and the, the few of us that were programmers were very inexperienced, and uh, none of that came together into a game at the end. It like was kind of a half-broken thing where you could kind of move around. Um, this was you know before the Unity days. It was uh, I think we ended up using SDL and C++. But but we also um, I think we I think we actually switched engines midway through the jam, which I Whoa. never do that, never do that. Um, so anyway, yeah, that was that was my first jam. All right. Thanks. Uh, we we can just keep it with you, Stephen. Okay. So um, we'll work our way back. So given that you started ten years ago, and the rest of you, um, what have you learned since that first game jam? to the last game jam that you just participated in? What, if the, what are some of the key lessons that you've taken away in that time? I think it's, it's kind of like any skill. You, you, know, you get better with practice. You kind of learn what you can and you can't do. Um, I don't know. It's, uh, you get better at working with people. Like one of the really cool things about game jams, I think, that uh, like I didn't really get in college because I started doing game jams like right after I graduated college. Uh, is you get to work with people with different skill sets than you, like artists and musicians, programmers, um, what have you. Like I took two uh, game programming classes in school, and one one of them had a group project, and it was all programmers making a game together. Um, so I think just working with other people is really the coolest thing about it, like getting to know other people that are different than you. Um, I've learned, I've done two game jams. I did uh, this one last year and the one before that. And uh, I learned a lot from both of them. Um, one is that, uh, one important thing I think is um, you're there in a competition of sorts, but it doesn't have to be a get away from me, you can't see my stuff competition. You know, you're all, you're all game developers doing the same thing. So it's fine to go help, maybe take a break from your own stuff and go help people out. I remember in our first game jam, I... Uh, it was like three in the morning and I was running into an issue with something that I had no idea how to fix. And one guy I knew randomly walked up and goes, hey, how's it going? I'm like, I can't figure this thing out. And he's like, oh, maybe you should try that. I was like, thank you. Because <laughs> I would have spent hours trying to fix it. So that, that helped me out a lot and helped me like regress. Um, and the other thing uh, I think is just to do them because they're good. Uh, we went last year uh, mostly just to have a fun time and play around not you know we weren't like we're gonna try to win and take everything we're we were like ah oh, we'll just mess around and it ended up giving birth to our new game so you know it's uh, a lot of good things can come out of them <laughs> yeah, thank you for the award <laughs> um see i think one of the most important lessons i learned uh from the first to the last uh, game jam is that uh you work better when you've slept. Um, it might seem like, oh, if I stay up and code more, more will get done. In fact, the opposite is quite true. Um, I don't care what you say, like, oh, man, I work so great at 5 in the morning on five, like, cups of coffee. I work great at that hour at that rate. Like, trust me, you work better on a little bit of sleep, on a little bit of nap time, or just, like, putting your head down just for a little bit. Um, because you don't even realize the difference that it makes until you start trying to do that. Um, the other big lesson that I learned was, based off of our last experience with the Game Jam, um, don't be afraid to go your own way. Like I, I think very early on, as we were starting our, our Game Jam last year, 
we realized, ah, I don't know if our idea really is going to mesh with the theme for this year. And we're like, All right, let's just prototype it. Let's see how it turns out. We made the prototype. And when the prototype was just boxes moving around with no audio, no art, no particle effects, we were like, this is really fun. There's just boxes moving around. All right, screw the theme. Just, we're going to make this game. This game is too fun to not make. And so we used those 48 hours as an excuse to not let ourselves leave the game jam without finishing the prototype. And we did that. Our prototype was really fun. And like he said, it's the reason why we have the game that my studio is making now. So um, don't be afraid to see where your passion takes you and just go with your idea and finish it. Because uh, that's, that's the real goal, is to finish a game. Yeah, I think so many people, from my experience, they come in and they either have two ambitions. They either have one of, I want to win this competition, I want to make the best game possible. Or two, they come in with a big picture idea of what they want to do when there's a much simpler goal that you know people talk about when they've had a good time and they've had success, and that's just finishing a prototype, just finishing a game. It doesn't have to be the best game you've ever imagined in the world. Just getting it done is, is quite an amazing accomplishment, especially for someone like me observing it who doesn't make games on a regular basis. <laughs> it, it, that's just put it lightly. It's pretty pretty fantastic and inspiring to see so many people make a game just in 48 hours. You all talked about a little bit. We have teammates up here, and Stephen, you've, you've worked on a 10-person team and, and probably a variety of other teams in there. I know we have some folks in the audience today who've made games on their own. Uh, what do you look for in teammates if you're going into the experience to participate with others, which most do, by the way. Most are going in to work with others. What do you look for in those teammates, especially in situations where you may not know them very well to begin with? So it may, may not just be the question, I guess, two-part would be, what do you look for? And then what do you look to get to know about those individuals who you don't know very well in the, the first hour or so? I'd say that... Um... More than a quote unquote lack of skill or lack of knowledge, the things that I see that harms teams most is just poor cooperation. Um, I've been very fortunate that the first team that I was in, my first real game jam, was really cohesive and like very little friction and we just we just gelled and as i mentioned in the story earlier we had no choice in being a team we were kind of just told hey you guys are a team now and we we're just like i guess we have to do this um i don't know if that actually helped us in a certain way because we were just like we were one of the last few teams to get formed and we realized hey we're stuck with each other let's have a good time <laughs> um but i guess yeah one personally what i look for when i'm working in a group for a game specifically, um, I've always felt like game development is like being in a band. Um, it's not like coding. You have to have similar ideas, sorry, a similar vision and a similar passion for what you're doing. Otherwise, you know, things aren't going to work out. So what I look for is being cooperative, being willing, willing to compromise on ideas. Um, and that's sometimes the hardest thing, even for you thinking like, oh, man. I'm the best game developer in the world. I have the best ideas. And you have to remind yourself, like, no, you don't. <laughs> sometimes you don't. And sometimes you need to listen to what someone else is telling you, and you have no idea how much better your game is going to be if you do. Um, yeah, I'd say, I don't know, you, you want to, it's less about marketing yourself at this point and more about marketing your abilities, like what you can offer to the team. Um, and I had a game dev class in college where we it was uh, when we formed teams for our final project. It was actually very similar to a game jam where uh, the professor made us write down our skills on like uh, index cards, and we just had those pretty much like this. We were like, "Oh, you you do art? I do programming. Let's go." And um, so, also don't be offended if someone's like, "Hey, we just don't need a third programmer here. Sorry, can you find another team?" Because it's not that they don't want you; it's that to finish the game, they need to kind of fill in the missing pieces that they don't have. Um, so yeah, so try to market your skills um, as best you can. Uh, one of our guys in the first game jam, we asked if he could do art, and he said, kinda. We were like, well, that's the best we got, so I guess you're doing art. And his art was amazing. And I didn't know why he was underselling himself so much, but um, yeah, so get your skills out there and, and form a, a complete team. So I've worked with, with people that I already knew before the jam, and I've worked with a lot of people I didn't know before the jam. 
And uh, I think it's a little bit easier if you work with people you know that you have worked with before. But some of the people that I've met that I didn't know before the, for game jams are now like some of my closest friends. Um, some of them were not, or not. They're, I didn't really enjoy working with them. <laughs> but you never know. Like I, I really recommend like doing a little bit of both. Like find a few core people that you like to work with, and then work with a few random people every time, and just see see what happens. Um, it's kind of an amazing situation that you don't usually get into. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's it's really kind of all about communication and like making sure everyone on the team is on the same page about what you're what you're doing, what you're making. Um, I would say try to work with people that are around the same like skill and experience level as you, um, but work with people that you can learn from. Um, I don't know. That's that's kind of what I have to say. About. There's a, you know three topics that have come up that I just want to to touch base on, and one is that at least with the global game jam, but I think it's true for all game jam communities, the the idea that these are these are events, these are weekends, these are 48 hours where we want to encourage people to be open to new experiences, to network, meet new people. The idea that yeah, you might meet some friends for life, you may also meet some people who are. Well, you're just working with them for the weekend, and that's fine. But being open to those new experiences and along those same lines, not to feel offended if a t if if a team says, "I'm sorry, we just don't need somebody else right now," um, and don't don't hesitate to then say, "Okay, no problem. Can you help me find another team?" If you don't know many people, I found the game jams that I've been to and helped host to be extraordinarily open and thoughtful. Um, groups of people. Everyone really does want to help each other. So please do that. The other things I would say is about the idea of working with people you know versus you don't know. And this comes from some of the research that I've actually conducted on data from the Global Game Jam. And what I found in the data that I, I've analyzed here is that when you work with people you, you have not worked with in the past, those teams tend to be more innovative than teams that are working with all people they've worked with before. And the theory behind this is essentially, once you start building those routines and those, those patterns of behavior and those thoughts where you're on the same page, you're likely not going to experiment as much. You're not going to create as novel of game mechanics, of novel of design features, because you're not bringing in all those different ideas that you're just bringing the same ideas that you've worked with others before. So there are these these benefits to it. On the flip side, and Stephen kind of talked about this too, and you guys did with the collaboration and the communication, is you certainly need to have that. We find when there's relationship conflict, when there's conflict over, I don't like the way you're doing something, not what you're doing, but the way you're doing it or the way you're talking, that really hurts team dynamics. And there's nothing novel in that kind of finding in the research I've conducted. What we do find, though, is it's extremely important to have the types of task conflict. So when you think, I know how to do this, and somebody else says, well, I think I know how to do this, that's amount of task conflict. How should we get this? How should we accomplish this? And then getting to the point where you can make compromises. So you can get beyond that task conflict, which could lead to relationship conflict if you don't resolve it. So you want to make sure you're pushing each other on this. Is, you know, everyone's coming in to learn. So make sure you you take make sure to make an effort to push each other thoughtfully about what you're doing, not about who each other are might be. But those are important pieces that we found in the research that my co-authors and I have conducted. Um, how do you keep things going after the game jam? All, you, you have all had experiences where you've taken a game from a game jam and you've moved it forward afterward. You've decided, yes, this is a good enough prototype, we should spend time on this. What, is, what has made the difference for, for each of you? Well, uh, the first thing I wanna say about that is that it's really hard. Like, everybody has jobs, like this is your kind of side project, fun thing that you do. So it's really hard, and if it like fizzles out, like, it's, that's okay. Don't, don't be too stressed out about it. But like, if you really like it, um, and your teammates also really like it, then you can keep it going. Um, you know, maybe you only work on it on the weekends or once a month or however often, um, but it's possible to do. You guys have maybe been more successful. <laughs> uh, 
Um, yeah, so our first game was Merciful God. That was the one that won um, global, uh, won Best in Georgia um, when we made it. And we didn't do anything after. Uh, we made it. We, like, polished it up a little bit once we were done because we liked what we had, and then that was it. But it did lead to the forming of our company because we realized how well we worked together during the game jam, so we thought we could work well doing other games. So we started working on uh, some other projects, and then the next year came around. We had a few projects that kind of fizzled out because they weren't as fun. And then it was at that particular point that our current project was just at a wall. We were at a standstill, didn't know what to do with it. So thought we'd do the game jam, get the creative juices flowing. And then we said, man, this game is really fun. Let's just make this our primary thing. So, um, so from there, the most important thing that we did not do, because we're bad people, is get rid of all your prototype code, restructure correctly, so that hurt us a lot later because we're not as good as we think we are. Um, but past that, once we're at the, the part where we wanted to keep it going, we realized what we had, and then we um, I mean, we sat down. This is what we do at the Game Jam, too. We sat down and we talked about what the finished product could be um, and then see if we can set realistic goals to get up to that you know, final thing, see if our scope's right. Also make sure that we're not like, yes, this is a 10-year scope that will get done by next month. That's fine. So scoping is important for both after and during the game jam. Um, and then we worked on it. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, so like, like you said, Merciful God didn't go anywhere after the game jam um, for a number of reasons. Um, but... Uh, Twin Cop is a very different story, and I think thus far we've been pretty successful with maintaining a steady rate of development on it over the year that we've been working on it. Um, and I think one of the, I mean, undoubtedly one of the most helpful, helpful things about this is the fact that we're roommates. So that makes things, <laughs> that makes working on this game a lot easier when we're just like, hey, Eric, you working on it? Yeah. What are you doing? Here we go. Great. Like, we don't, we don't even need, like, any, like, project management tasks, even though we use some, but we don't need it because... It's all there. Um, so I think besides that, though, some general advice I can think about it, keeping your team together is a matter of like, what we did after our first game jam that really helped sort of solidify us as a team was we forced ourselves to all go and meet at a neutral location that wasn't one of our apartments um, once a week. Because uh, I know that <clears throat> a lot of teams after game jam, they're like, yeah, let's let's keep this going. We made such a great game. Let's let's really make this into a thing. And then you all try to meet at your best bud's house, and then maybe like someone turns on StarCraft or whatever, and then you all play that for two hours, and then you're like, oh yeah, so what do we want to do for a game? Yeah, and you talk about ideas for a little while, and then you're done with the meeting, and then you all go home, and then maybe you do that one or two more times, and then it's over. Alternatively, think about it like how if you want to get motivated to go to the gym, you say, hey, buddy, meet me at the gym at this hour then you're like, I should probably show up at the gym at that hour, or that's going to be really mean of me. So similarly, you tell your team, hey, everyone, let's meet up at this classroom on campus, or let's meet up at this Starbucks. And then when you don't show up, then everyone has it in the back of their mind. They're like, hey, I should, I should show up to this, because I'm, other people are counting on me to show up to this. You get this nice sort of feedback loop. We haven't had one of those formal meetings in a long time, but that's because we did that for a solid six months. We built up that rapport and the ability to work together and trust each other with uh, long distance communication. And I think we've been pretty good since then. So one more point. Um, you should also know if your game can go past a game jam. Like with Twin Cop, we had a good little controlled, contained, fun game. And then we said, if we expand it this way, it can be better. It can be a more full experience and bigger than what it is now. Um, but again, when we did Merciful God, we said, you know, this is all it needs to be. We don't, we can't really make it any bigger than it is right now without just making it worse. Um, so that's an important step to take too. If you're, if you think your game is fun at the end of the game jam, pursue it. And if you don't think so, then take what you learned and move on to the next thing. So I think we'll, one more question, then we'll open it up to Q&A. Two more questions? Okay. Um, well, this is a two-part question, so we'll see how this goes. Uh, so I was thinking, 
What advice uh, have you heard from other panelists or other uh, feedback that you've received that you think is most important to share tonight? And then I'd like you to think of one piece of advice that you've never heard anyone else give about a game jam before, something that's unique that you think would be novel tonight to be able to share. So those two things. What's the best advice you've received or heard in the past, and what's something that you don't think others ever really shared in the past that might be useful? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Clock's ticking. OK. Um, I'd say one of the best pieces of advice I received um, is kind of just more general towards working in a team. And I've already said it, but it's, it is it is the best advice I've ever received uh, for working in a team, which is your ideas aren't always the best. Um, it just, it's not even, it's not a matter of, sorry, this advice doesn't apply to you if you are actively thinking that you are the best. It applies to you even if you're just, convinced that your idea is the only way. Um, one of the reasons why I really enjoy working with Eric is because whenever we are talking about a design decision on one of the games we're working on together, we've never had like a fight about it. <laughs> it's always just been like, man, I really think that we should do this this way. And he's like, no, I think we should do it that way. And then we're like, OK, there's something here. We can find out a better solution. Um, it's not a matter of my way or the highway. Um, Generally, I think that's the best piece of advice anyone's given me because uh, it is a thing that I have to think about more often than I'd like to admit is, Kardec, shut up. Someone else yeah. someone else knows this better than you do. Um, now, as far as advice that I don't think anyone's given, it's going to be impossible, but I'll try. Um, I'd say... Oh, that's, that's, a, that's a tough question. <laughs> um, you can always give it some thought and pass it down. Yeah. And, yeah. Oh, it's cheating. <laughs> <laughs> You're wrong. Uh, so let's see. Yeah, these are all hard questions. I was thinking the whole time he spoke, and I have nothing. No. Um, most important piece of advice, I think, is to scope, honestly. Because um, that's general prototyping advice, is to that he will give, is uh, if you're prototyping a game at a game jam or in your own time or whatever, try to do it in one sitting as opposed to, I'm going to do four hours now and then four hours next month and all that because then by the time you come back, everything's bad. So try to force yourself to finish whatever it is you're working on at the game jam before time is up. Um, if you want to spruce it up a little bit after, that's fine, but try to have something that's finished and working uh, at the end of the game jam, because uh, that's just a good practice to get into anyway. And a game jam is a little bit longer, or is a long one sitting. So once you do that, then try to just make it, or do it better, do it faster. Um, advice that no one's ever given. Hmm. Or you've just never heard. Or I've never heard. I mean, we've all we've all listened to YouTube videos or seen other panel talks on game jams. What's something that you haven't heard somebody else share before? It's so hard. Yes. <laughs> that one. Um, delete everything <laughs> when you're done. I'm sure someone said that before, but that's the most novel thing that, that I can, piece of advice I can give is once you're done, sorry, I shouldn't say delete everything. <laughs> Keep hold on to it as a learning tool. Delete everything if you're planning on going forward with it. Like, don't use any of the code that you did over that weekend, because as soon as you decide that you want to continue with it, you will immediately know how to do it better and use that to do it better. Um, the entirety of Twin Cop, uh, Twin Cop's prototype could have been redone in another 48 hours, but with such a significantly better framework to handle where we are now with the game. Because, I mean, even now, a year after we started that project, I'm finding myself thinking like, hey, we want to implement this really fun mechanic. Darn it, there's this one line of code here handling X, Y, and Z, and that was all the way back from when it was a prototype, and now I need to set up a system so that we can do this new mechanic that we want to do now. That problem wouldn't exist if we were a little bit more uh, 
careful when we made our uh, first first uh, prototype. But again, you shouldn't be you shouldn't be careful when you're prototyping. You should be carefree, making everything as fast as possible. So that's why you should. Thank you. <laughs> it really it really depends i've had projects that i've worked on afterwards where you could refactor it wasn't too bad and i've had projects where it's like this is a nightmare i have to just start over um but yeah i think the best advice really is just keep it super simple like treat it like it is a prototype um think you know the the cool idea that you have as a team that you've collaborated on that you want to make like what is the simplest possible thing you can make that expresses that like your your game should probably only have one level um you know keep it super super minimal so that you can actually finish something in the limited time that you have and then um the advice that I don't think I've ever heard anyone say uh, you know, because a game jam is like a fun, casual event. Like, I don't think I've ever heard anyone say like, be professional, but you know, I've seen like at a game jam, people like watching a movie and like playing like league of legends and stuff like that. Like, it's not really a good look. Like, you know, you should like kind of treat it like you're, you're at work sort of to some extent and like be nice to other people. Don't be a jerk. Like, so, so <laughs> I've I've won like a handful of game jams and I've finished some games from game jams and I have you know a portfolio of games that have won at game jams and that's really cool and you should do that you should finish your game and put it out there um and you know tell people that you won game jams on your resume and stuff like that if you want to get a, a job in the games industry but the thing that's more likely to get you a job honestly is the connections that you've made the people that you've worked with that know that you have not that you have knowledge and skills and that liked working with you I like that. Thanks. Um, this is a piece of advice that I think maybe I've given, but I'm going to do it anyway. <laughs> um, and it's sort of building off what uh, what Stephen said. Um, when you're thinking about uh, scoping your game and keeping it to like one level or something, you should try to build your game as uh, like middle out. So get your mechanic, get it, get it feeling good, get a start and an end. And then see how much time you have left and then start pushing content into the middle. That makes it a bigger game. Because if you put a start in and then you say, all right, we're going to have this five levels and then it'll end this way and you get to level three and the game jams over, that's a bad time. Which is, it's much better to have that game that has a start, one level, that feels good and then end and it's all like one piece. So, uh, yeah. One more thing, I want to really quickly just second what Steven said because now that he said it, I have to piggyback. Be nice. That's so important, actually, because uh, the games industry here, particularly in Georgia, it's growing, it's big, but it's also very small at the same time in terms of the number of people that are here. Um, I see a lot of familiar faces every single time I go to GGDA meetups. Every time I go to any meetups, I see a lot of familiar faces. And you will, if you continue to stick around in the industry around here, see a lot of faces over and over again. If you're mean, it's going to be a lot lot harder for you and it doesn't matter if you are like the best game developer in the world just be nice we all want to help we all want to help each other and we all want to help each other grow and get better so you also never know who's going to be at a game jam i'm 25 i am not in college i have a job you know it's not just like oh there's a guy we're probably the same age and we're friends so i can act however i want you know that guy could say yeah you worked really well during this game jam I don't know. Maybe I'll bring you on and see what see what you got in the real world. Like the guy who worked at Unity that was hovering over your shoulder while we were working. That guy scared me <laughs> because he walks up and he says, "Are you doing this?" Who is? <laughs> yes, I'm doing that. And he's like, "I wouldn't do it that way." I was like, "I was like, okay." And I turned and looked back and I was like, "He's wearing a Unity shirt." <laughs> Let me fix this right now. Thank you. <laughs> So I think we'll open up to Q&A. Um, I do want to say one thing before we do Q&A is I think we've been talking mostly about digital games, electronic games, but game jams are also very much encourage analog games, board games, card games, and such. I know I had a great experience doing that two years ago at the GSU Game Jam. Wow. 
and loved it. It was actually the first analog game I've ever made, and it was a ton of fun over the time. So, you know, it's a very open experience. It doesn't have to be just a digital game. So if you come to the jam and just like games and you want to make an analog game, and sometimes that those are the best ways to prototype too. I mean, you, you don't want to just jump right in. You may want to make a, you know, a game that you can play physically first. So let's do a q and I'm going to bring the microphone, or Andrew will bring the microphone around. So while I take this around, uh, Jay just brought up a good point I'd like to have folks address, which is what are those different roles that the team members can take on? Obviously, jerk is a key one, but QA is one people don't often think about. What are the roles, team lead, producer, whatever? Yeah, I mean, um, you know, you have your skills of like a uh, a developer, artist, uh, sounding musician, um, other things like that. Sometimes even a designer, it depends on your game. They're usually small enough to where you don't need someone who's great at level design because you don't need them to crank out like eight levels. Um, but that, depending on your idea, you could use that as well. But yes, he's um, in terms of like having a producer, have one person kind of in charge um, just to kind of like resolve anything, uh, keep the thing on track. Card deck's usually that for us. Um, it's worked out. Uh, yeah, QA is important because it's unfortunate if you're <laughs> if the judges are playing your game and then it crashes and you're like, huh, I never thought to play it like that. Oops. Um, I don't know what what other. Um, to, to, to be back on the QA thing real quick, QA doesn't mean play through your game three times. QA means QA. Uh, both Eric and I have done official, like actual QA jobs. Uh, it's very different than just play testing. QA means go to the corner of the room and tap A repeatedly because that might break something. Now, I mean, do it intelligently. Don't do that just because just because I said so. Uh, you coded the game, so hopefully you should have some idea of like, hey, I think it might break this way. Let's test the ways it can break. Um, to add to the list of roles, uh, well, not to add, I guess, again, piggybacking. Yes, have someone in charge, but don't treat this like a company game. Don't be like, I'm the producer. The bull stops with me kind of thing. Just, hey, we're all a team. I'm just here to make sure that we are all talking to each other and we all have a cohesive vision. Um, whenever I'm leading our, our teams, it's more so just a matter of me saying, hey, Eric, did you talk to that guy? Does he know that you're doing this? And does he know that you're doing that? Cool, that's it. That's all I'm doing. I'm not there to say, do the game this way. So. <laughs> on, on the subject of like having a producer, um, I don't think you necessarily have to have one. But I've, a very common problem I see at game jams is you know like at the beginning of the game jam when you when you get your theme and you're trying to come up with the idea for your game, everyone's throwing out ideas. You're brainstorming. Um, people will have a tendency to kind of like fall in love with their like favorite idea, and everyone thinks that they're on the same page about the idea of the game that they're making, but they're not really. Like everyone's still kind of like, this is my favorite part of the things we said, and this, this, and and so like, if especially if you have a large team, it can be hard to make all of the things people are doing individually come together into a whole. Um, and it, it definitely helps if you have someone who's like the project owner that like makes the decisions about what what's happening and what goes in and what doesn't and, and is making sure that people are doing things that are going to work together. And then last point before we get to questions is um, a very specific point about QA. Uh, you know, do things you just don't think people are going to do. I have a natural tendency for whatever to play games weirdly. I don't know why. It's just me. Don't judge. But like my first industry QA experience was I was playing a racing game and the first ticket I put in was, hey, you can fall off the map in like 38 spots on this level. And the developers were like, what are you, how? And it's easy, I drove backwards. And they were like, why? Because I wanted to, fix your game. We have a question from online. They uh, ask for you to tell us the story of why in the world you changed engines midstream and what happened? Uh, so it's a little bit complicated, but we were using, and this was like a long time ago, so it was it was very uh, feature incomplete at the time. We were using at first this engine called Lou or no, called Love. That is like a Louvre. Is that how you pronounce it? It's like a, a Lua thing. Anyway, I liked it. Uh, some of the other people on my team thought it was too simple or something. 
And I think actually I went home and slept. And while I was sleeping, they decided to, <laughs> they decided they, they were going to change engines is what happened. Um, I had no input on it. That's what you get for sleeping. Yeah. I, no, you should sleep, definitely. <laughs> Uh, it's just a question regarding when did you guys, or rather, how did you guys find out about the idea of a game jam to begin with, and how did you know that you were ready to go out there and just start, you know, put your, rather than test yourself, I guess. I'm going to give Andrew credit. I don't know if he actually is responsible, but I I, uh, I wanted to make games, so I, I found the GGDA, and um, someone was just starting up an Athens chapter. I went to UGA. And so I started going to meetings, and they started having game jams. And I honestly probably d did not have the skills to do it at first, um, but I did it anyway, and I learned so much from it that it was great eventually. <laughs> uh, he dragged me along. Um, I had always wanted to do games, but I was not very like well-versed in how game-making worked, really. Um, so I could make a game, but I wasn't sure about how things worked in like the industry or just in like in everyday life, I guess. And so I was one of the people who he said, Hey, we're going to do this game jam. And I was like, what's that? So, uh, if you have friends, don't assume they know what a game jam is because they might not be doing it because they just don't know what it is. So, uh, yeah. Drag your friends to <laughs> game jams. It's <laughs> my advice. Um, and then another piece of advice is, uh, cause you're asking about like, how do you know you're ready to do a game jam? Is that what you were asking? Sort of? Oh, yeah. You <laughs> That's basically what I was going to say. It's just, yeah, if you are thinking about whether or not you're ready, you're ready to make a game jam. Just like the advice that anyone would give a, uh, someone who wants to write, write. If you want to make video games, start making video games. Easiest place to start is usually game jams. I just want to say one thing, too, is if you don't think you're ready, that's the best time to do it. Because this is the only experience you're going to get to find out if that's what you want to do. So if you want to be an artist, but you don't think you're ready, go try it out. And you'll find out, do you like this? And if you don't, that's fine. That's one of the best things you can get from going to a game jam. That you find out you don't want to do something. I think that it's underappreciated because there's so many different things you can do to make a game. And you might say, you know what? Making games isn't for me. Either. I mean, hopefully you don't walk away from this experience <laughs> feeling that way because it's so much fun and it is a fun experience for all. But, you know, no time like the present to, to figure that out. Safe environment. Quick follow up to that. Also, um, I know that I personally get uh, very anxious talking to people I don't know yet um, sometimes. So, and if you get very shy or introverted, all that kind of stuff. I 100% empathize with like the anxiety associated with going to a game jam. Um, you got to try, try as hard as you can to push yourself through that. Like uh, I think one of the things that really helped me was bringing a friend along. And then I was just like, if everything goes terribly, I can just hide behind him and everything will be fine. <laughs> um, so if you have a friend who is more extroverted than you, then latch onto them and push them in front of you as a human body shield. Um, and, seek uh, out the host. and seek out the host. Yes, that's also great advice. Um, I think one of the things that helped uh, me as well was the fact that just the people who were organizing the event uh, when we went that year at SCAD, and I'm sure it's the same for GSU and all the other locations, they're there to make sure you have a good time. So if you're having trouble finding a group, if you're having trouble like talking to other people you haven't met before, just seek out the host, say, hey, Help. <laughs> yeah. I've, I've actually hosted like six game jams or something in Athens. And like one of the things that I would do when the game jam is getting started is like actually go around and try to find the stragglers and put them together into a team and make them talk to each other. <laughs> so the, the host is there to help you make you have a good time. And don't be afraid to express that it's your first game jam or that you're inexperienced or whatever. Because we had uh, in our first one, we had a fifth guy who said that his main skill was programming, but he was slightly, like only slightly comfortable with programming. And so since I was going to be the programmer for our team, I um, looked at what we needed to do and then I helped like give him some easier tasks. So uh, sometimes if you express that you want to do something, but you're not great at it or you don't have much experience, then 
hopefully, if you're being nice, <laughs> someone will um, try to help you and, you know, try to push you into it a little bit. No. Um, have you guys ever done any kind of like prep work before a game jam to get ready? Like maybe some kind of like libraries or maybe open source games or anything like that? We get a lot of sleep beforehand. <laughs> um, I don't know. We do a lot of projects on our own anyway. And so we, I try to think of the general things that we could use. Uh, so like for Twin Cop, um, I'd set up a, a pretty easy and dynamic like pausing system. And so we knew we could just kind of like throw that in. So I made sure I like was good with how it worked and I could just kind of boom, throw it in. Now we can pause our game and not have to spend hours trying to figure out a new way to do it. Um, other prep, I don't know. What? Um, I mean, and this is something that uh, I guess Eric and I do a lot whenever we're talking about game ideas. We, we talk about the game idea of, or sorry, we talk about a game idea that we like and then we usually just through talking flesh out, like just what is our back end kind of gonna be. Um, it's good to sort of don't don't like UML diagram while you're there or anything like that. Just you should be able to have some back end framework in mind if you're one of the programmers on the team before you start coding uh, because that'll help. Because when we were starting on Twin Cop, I was like, okay, so we know what the general idea is. When we get back, I'm gonna code up one script that makes the character move with two people attached. That's gonna be done you get bullets to shoot. Like that's related, but it's also, but it's also uh, its own thing that you can start thinking about before we even get there. Like we'd never made a co-op game before, so I had to figure that out on the fly, but Eric has made things shoot before. So it wasn't like he wrote a library for it before, but you know, he knew where to start essentially. Steven? I, I would say, I don't think you need to prepare too much. Like, I mean, you, you generally, if you have some experience, you know the tools that you like to use. And I would say, like, push yourself at the Game Jam a little bit out of your comfort zone with those. Like, learn a new feature of the software you use or something. But don't go too crazy with it. Like, you're not going to learn a new game. I mean, you could, but it would be really hard. Um, if you're, like, a, a 2D illustrator, you're probably not going to learn how to animate 3D characters in a weekend, that kind of thing. Same especially if you're a programmer, uh, for your team, set up some kind of subversion repository. Yep. This is great prep because you're going to spend way too much time later dealing with it, and it's just easier if you set your accounts up and say, hey, artists, come sign up for this thing. Yeah, and at the beginning of the jam when you're meeting people, it helps to talk to them about what tools they're familiar with so you guys can find a common ground. Like, oh, okay, you know Unity, I know Unity. Oh, you use Maya, like that'll work. You know, that kind of stuff. If you're using Unity and uh, we use GitHub, um, force text serialization. Don't try to merge binary files. <laughs> it's impossible. Save yourself a lot of trouble. Uh, yeah, what is your um, feeling on, in terms of preparing for a game jam, um, like doing a run up to the game jam by like prototyping a bunch of just random little mechanics, you know, not knowing what the theme's gonna be, just, you know. Try them on your own, like warm up. Prototyping little mechanics is like what I do all the time when I'm bored. That's just, I love prototyping little mechanics all the time. Um, so I have like a million and one thoughts on that, but I'll generally condense it down into something that Eric already said earlier, which is do it in one sitting whenever you're prototyping a small mechanic. Um, doing it in one sitting forces you to take your small mechanic and figure out what is the essence of what makes that fun and how can I get it done before I have to sit up from this chair again. Um, it also forces you, um, cause I, I, I straddle somewhere between artists and programmer. I like to make a little bit of art and stuff every, when, every now and then. If, when I force myself to prototype a small mechanic in one sitting, it also forces me to do it with boxes and do it with squares instead of, oh, but I could make this really cool little character if I, with little eyes and, oh, okay, no, don't do any of that. Just boxes, one sitting, done, and then either delete it afterwards or just put it away and don't, don't look at it again. Practice makes perfect. <laughs> Every time. 
so on that, um, if you are going to prototype to, I guess, try to get ready for it, um, it's certainly a good way to get, you know, again, like creative juices flowing. Um, if you want to just kind of be in that mode of thinking for when the game jam happens, uh, it is, I think it's very rare for you to, it's surprising to me, but it's very rare for you to prototype a little mechanic and then find that it will fit, uh, whatever happens. Cause like we couldn't have ever come up with the idea for twin cop on its own and we barely did with the theme. <laughs> and so, cause the theme was waves and we said, what if you're on the same wave length? We've got a game. So. Yeah, I mean, I think that, like, prototyping different mechanics is, is a great way to get better as a game programmer, but I wouldn't necessarily expect to be able to use those at the jam. I think that, the, like, the creative process of, like, coming up with a game idea based on the theme is, like, one of the coolest parts of a game jam, and that, you know, if you have experience making a platformer, like, that will help you make a platformer of the game jam, but I wouldn't, like, expect to use some platform platform prototype you already had yeah and i think just piggybacking off that that's probably the biggest thing you'll get out of it is like oh wow in this small sitting of trying to do this one thing i learned this really cool thing that i'll use later on and that's like a you know a general prototyping thing anyway as a host i would say to prepare come early to the jam don't come if we if it, the jam's supposed to start at five but there's a two hour lead up to it, which is what we do. We open it at three and then come at three. If you can come as soon as you can hang out, get to know people. It, that's the best way to prepare. And then I would say too, as a team, uh, don't immediately get your team together and start brainstorming ideas, get to know each other first. So I know it's cheesy, but I, you know, icebreakers do actually work it to a certain extent, just to get to know each other before you jump into that, oh my gosh, we only have 48 hours, we better get to thinking up ideas. No, no, get to, get to know each other first before you get to that phase. So. Okay, we have a question from online. Ninrak wants to know if any of you have ever made a tool set for your game during the game jam. I know that uh, Eric and I, as a general uh, game development process, always try to make a way to make content in our game. Um, when we made uh, when we made the Merciful God, which was a wave-based um, sort of WarioWare-esque game in which you just had a bunch of little mini games to play over and over and over again, uh, the, one of the very first things that I think Eric coded was a very generic, this is a mini game object. And then we took that mini game object and duplicated it four times and then added in uh, custom implementations for each of them. Because then that, what that meant was, uh, sorry, I took it back. We took that mini game object, duplicated it three times, implemented each one, and then we got close to the end of the game jam. We were like, hey, we still have like two more hours. Great. Duplicate that one more time, make a different implementation, one more mini game added, done. So similarly with Twin Cop, when we started, uh, again, I think Eric, you probably made the enemy script class that was just like, here is a generic enemy. Copy and paste, copy and paste, three enemies, done. And then we just like changed a little bit about how their behavior worked, put in a different sprite. Looks like your game has more content, even though it's essentially, you know, one one code base. So um, that's, I guess. Yeah, we don't typically like make tools for the game we're working on at the game jam, just because um, a lot of times if you're like strictly a Unity developer, um, one of the like last things you hit are like, custom editors and stuff like that to, to help you. Like I just got into them after, I don't know how many years of using Unity. Um, and then they're usually to solve very specific problems, such as like when you're making a game for Steam, I can never remember the preprocessor pound define in my head. And so I built a script that says, hey, disable Steam. Thank you. Uh, and now my, my... No, don't do, no, please don't. If you do, uh, I'm not even going to get into that, but um, you know, I've I've learned techniques at game jams that I've used in projects after the game jam, and I think it's totally possible that if you could write some tools at a game jam that you would want to use again, it's probably not likely because you probably threw it together and it was a mess, but it could happen. I have heard of some people um, remember, like the game jam is for you to get something out of, whether it's a small game. Or if you decide that, hey, you know, while making this game, I realized that this tool would be really helpful. If you want to spend your time making that 
tool, there's nothing stopping you. Uh, I mean, it, the purpose of the game jam, in my mind, was met of getting your creativeness going, and then you said, you know what, it led to this really cool tool that I'll now use forever, maybe even sell, who knows. Um, and I, I think that's a good thing, so. All right, well, we're pretty much out of time. Any last questions, either from online or from here? All right, uh, thank you all very much. First of all, big round of applause for our panelists. Stephen Borden, Eric Cook, Carter Kinney, and especially Dr. J. O'Toole, who also supplied the pizza you're eating. Yes, there's pizza here. You should have been here. Uh, thank you very much for that. And again, we will be doing the Best in Georgia competition again, where we don't necessarily give dollar prize. What we do is we hook the best games from each site up with industry experts who will help come in, talk you through next steps, help you plan the next steps, and connect you with folks who can give you professional advice on moving forward, forming partnership agreements, and so forth. Those are some of the first things you should do out of a jam when you're planning to launch your game out into the wild. So uh, remember that you can follow the GGDA, GGA uh, underscore or on Twitter, check out our Facebook group. Come out to the Game Jam sites. Right now I'm aware of three in Georgia, one at Georgia State University. Uh, and you can find all of these very easily on the Game Jam website. Just click when you look at your locations, put in the state abbreviation GA, and you'll find everything going on in Georgia. Uh, so obviously GSU, uh, we have one at Kennesaw State University and one at SCAD Atlanta. I imagine SCAD Savannah will add one later. We'll see if anyone else does. But uh, that's what we have to date, and all those will be entered in the uh, Best in Georgia competition. Uh, so thank all of you for joining us. We'll be on February 13th, our meeting next month, location to be announced. We've got some cool things happening, but nothing definite yet. And it's not on Valentine's Day. It's the day before, so come out, bring and make it a date anyway. Uh, nothing more romantic than our meetings. So, uh, again, thank you all very much, and we're going to leave the, the chat running because that was your chance to form a team. So go ahead and meet the folks around you, see who here you'd want to work with. All of you in chat will have the thanks for watching thing up, and chat will keep going, so you can go ahead and form teams there. And thank you very much for watching. Thank you all very much for attending. See everyone February 13th. And there's still pizza. Those of you who wanted it cold. Please, please stay.